Welcome back, Apology, 8th grade physical science, week 24, day 3, textbook pages 402 to 408, notebook pages 336, 338, experiment 11.2, making and using an electroscope. This will be um, conducted in class. All right, electric charge. We learned in module 3 that atoms are electrically neutral being composed of neutrons that have no charge and an equal number of protons positively charged and electrons negatively charged. When an atom loses electrons, it ends up with a positive charge and is called a positive ion or a cation. When an atom picks up an electric, uh, extra electron, it ends up with a negative charge, making it a negative ion or an anion. Electrically charged particles affect other charged particles in the area surrounding them. This is called the charge's electric field. The electric field of a charge is the effect it has on other charges in the space around it. Look at this figure. It shows the electric fields of positive and negative charges. The arrows represent the electric field and are called field lines. Notice how the field lines go out from a positive charge and into a negative charge. The direction of each line shows the direction of the electric force on a positively charged object in the charge's electric field. Also notice that the lines are closer together, the closer they are to the charge. The farther away from the charge, the farther the lines are away from each other. Remember the force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between two charges. So the closer to a charge, the greater the force, and the more charge an object has, the greater the force. So how do atoms gain or lose electrons to become charged? Well, one way that you already learned a bit about is through chemical reactions, and we're gonna learn a lot more about that um, in uh, when you reach chemistry. There are, however, other ways that atoms can gain or lose electrons. Static electricity is a buildup of electrical charges within or on the surface of a material. There are several ways that a net charge can build up on an object or be transferred from one object to another. Charge can be transferred by friction, by conduction, or by induction. Charging by friction. All right, when you rub the balloon in your hair in experiment 11.1, you charged the balloon by friction. The electrons in your hair were transferred to the balloon as you rubbed it against your hair because atoms in the latex balloon had a greater attraction for electrons than atoms in hair. Thus, the balloon picks up a negative charge and your hair becomes positively charged. This type of charging by friction can happen just by walking across a carpet in your socks on a dry day. If you've ever been shocked by touching a door handle after walking across the carpet, then you've been charged by friction. Jumping on a trampoline in your socks on a dry day can make your hair stand on end because of frictional charging. So charges by, charging by friction is charging an object by rubbing the two items together where one transfers electrons to the other. Charging by conduction. When you charge something by touching it to an electrically charged object and allowing the charge to flow between them, physicists say that you are charging by conduction. This is also known as charging by contact. Charging by conduction, charging an object by allowing it to come into contact with an object that already has an electrical charge. In other words, by allowing electrons to be conducted between the object you are charging and the object that already has a charge, you are charging by conduction. The Van der Graaff generator pictured in figure 11.9 uses a moving belt and it removes the electrons and accumulates a positive charge on top on the surface of the metal sphere. When the girl touches the sphere, she acquires that positive charge Large, large enough to make her hairs repel each other. The sphere is still charged, but because some of the charge is transferred to the girl, the net charge on the sphere is reduced, while the net charge on the girl is increased by the exact same amount. 
Think about a time that you were shocked when you touched a metal doorknob. First, you picked up extra electrons by friction when you moved over the carpet, and so your hand became negatively charged. When your hand comes near but does not yet touch the doorknob, that net negative charge of your hand repels the electrons in the doorknob. All right, so look at the figure 11.10. Notice that the electrons in the doorknob move to the base of the doorknob. So we have the negatively par charged particles moving to the base of the doorknob when your hand comes close to the doorknob. And remember, your hand was negatively charged from walking across the carpet. So that left a positive charge on the part of the doorknob closest to your hand. It is still neutral, but the charges have rearranged within itself. If you were able to separate the base of the doorknob from the handle at this point, the handle would have a positive charge. This is charging by induction. All right, experiment 11.2, making and using an electroscope as well as the supporting material on pages 406 407 and that little bit on 408 will be done in class. So on your own, if you want to give an object a positive charge, but the only source of charge you have is negative, would you charge the object by conduction or induction? All right, so you would definitely charge by induction. Induction gives you the charge opposite to what you are using while conduction gives you the same charge.